try and do this video. It wasn't that windy when we left, but it is now, so we'll see how this goes. But we're gonna do a video on the uh, the 2150. I'm gonna talk about all the mods and everything we did to this saw, just the mods to make it cut better. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so yeah, I did a couple other videos of this saw cutting and I did one video where I put the 20 inch bar on it and it actually does not too bad. It's still a little bit big, but it's it's great for limbing now actually with that, with that bar on there. It had a 16 inch before. Okay, so I got this saw. It was, I think 20 bucks and it didn't run. That's what they told me. So what I did for mods, we'll start with the intake. Well, first of all, I went into the carburetor and I took the little the little uh, limiting screws off of there. I think I got them in my little tickle trunk here somewhere. There they are. Those little things. Took them out. They're never going to go back in. They put them in there so that the average person or whatever that doesn't know, you know anything about saws or how to tune them, they don't want you to lean them out and blow them up. That's why they do that. But if you take them out and you learn how to tune the saw, you'll get much more performance out of it. But even after taking those out, it still didn't, uh, uh, it just still didn't have the power. So anyway, so we took them off and I adjusted it up and that was an improvement, but not the greatest. So then I'll pull the muffler off here in a, in a minute, but basically after I went in and I bent this little piece out here, can you see that? That piece right there, I bent it out a bit and I drilled some holes in behind there. I didn't go crazy on the muffler mod, but it definitely made a huge difference. And I took the baffles inside of here, right out of there. Um, so that's what we did for the muffler. Like I said, I'll pull it off in a few minutes here. I'm just gonna do a little overview. Okay, for the top cover, I, um, I drilled extra holes in here. That made it a lot more snappier. Like when you'd get on and off the throttle, it made a big, big difference in snap by giving it extra airflow there. I'll pull the cover off and I'll show you some things. Also what we did here was, um, I noticed that like when you'd rev it up, you, you couldn't feel any, any of the heat escaping anywhere. I couldn't feel it over here. I couldn't feel it over here. So I cut this cover out. And if you look at the old saws, the old, uh, any old chainsaw really, you'll see they're often open up quite a bit here. This was really shielded in. Part of that I'm sure is for noise, to keep the noise level down of it, because it definitely got a little bit louder once I opened it up there. Um, but uh, anyways, it's it puts out way more air than it did before. Like you stick your hand right here and you can feel the air before, you couldn't even feel it from here. So. I think it's going to help it run cooler anyways, just by letting heat escape. And also it doesn't seem to want a vapor lock or anything now that I did that. Cause it, cause when you shut it off, instead of holding all that heat in there, it can just escape pretty easily through the front and the back. The front cover used to come right up to here and I trimmed it back as well. Okay. So this is the cover before I did any mods to it. You can see how far it comes out there. And and then I trimmed it back and there's a good view of the two covers. So yeah, I definitely like it the way it is now. I trimmed just behind the, the handle as well. Just little things, I don't know. I think they make a difference. The saw works really good now. This was not planned. This uh, melted. Something happened there, I forget what. But it melted up against the exhaust. You don't have to do that. That was an accident. <laughs> okay, so I'll pull the top cover off. We'll talk about what I did under there. There's something else that I did in here. And my 15 year old dog isn't ready to shut her down just yet. She's been panting the last couple nights there. She, I think she's got arthritis again. 
but we have been doing some some hiking because spring is here so we've been doing lots of little hikes and hopefully she just gets in shape you know like it's like doing hay the first couple loads of hay your hands always wear down and after a few then you're good to go so hopefully she uh she gets a little conditioned here hey girl she just wants to play non-stop don't go off that cliff whatever you do <laughs> There you go. The walk while I was away, and he was talking for I knew it. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm gonna be like you, Dad. We'll come back to that saw in a little bit. Okay, so we got the top cover off here. That's the other thing about these saws, they're so, so easy to work on. Okay, so you can see the mods that I did on the cover. And, um,. Yeah, they're just a really nice chassis. They're super simple to work on. Yeah, you can see. They got a pretty small carb on them. I have another one of these. I have a 2050 that I'll do another video on. And it's uh, all apart right now, but we're going to, it's got a 41, I think it's a 41.1 millimeter piston. And that's what's gonna go in, in, uh, in that one. And then it's going to be my my main saw. I'm going to sell this one. I'm going to clean it all up and sell it. It's actually still in pretty nice shape, this one. These saws were made, I think, this one says 2003 on it, but they were made like late 90s, I believe it was. Okay, so what else have we got in here? Oh, there's the other thing. Can you see that right there? There was a hole there. And... I'll have to look at my notes, but uh, I got I got it saved somewhere. There, I actually talked to one of the engineers that helped design this saw. He was talking about, I think the theory here was that the flywheel would spin and it would suck the sawdust away from going into this area, like so it would keep the air filter cleaner longer, I think. I don't know. Anyways, I've got these holes undone. I cut lots with this saw, and you can see it's not that dirty. I oil the filter just a little bit. But yeah, super, super simple to, to work on. I covered that hole up just with a piece of grip tape. I just figured, you know, less heat getting into the, to this area, but that was before I drilled the holes. Now I've drilled the holes, so it's only gonna suck fresh air anyways. But, um, but yeah, so I covered it up. And I've, I've used this saw, I used this saw at minus 30 Celsius. That's really cold. And this thing ran like a top. So uh, it doesn't need any extra warm air injection or anything like that. But yeah, there you go. Super, super easy to work on. Okay, we'll pull the... Um, I'll pull this cover off here and I'll show you what I did here. You, if you don't mind, you said in love to dad, if I could find the time. You see my new jobs, I hassle in the kids and the flu. But it's sure nice talking to you, dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. Okay, so the other thing I did was I changed the sprocket on this thing. The, uh, the drum and the sprocket. So this is off of a Husky 41. Uh, Husqvarna 41. It's an older, late 90s saw. And I believe it was actually made by Poland. Poulin. Um, pretty sure that's who... I'm pretty sure they made the saw. And then Husqvarna bought them out. And... Um, they just put their name and color on it. I think this is seven tooth and the other one was six stock. And this is 0.325 pitch chain, I think 50 gauge. And this makes a huge difference, huge. The saw just runs smoother, it cuts much, much better. If you're gonna do any mod, do that one. Change the chain and sprocket. So yeah, we did that, we did the intake, we got rid of those limiters for the the carb we did our little grip tape thing here we did our cutting of the uh, see that trim the cover up a bit there don't mind that big hole that big hole there and I'll pull the exhaust off now and I'll show you what we did there Okay, so pull the exhaust off here. So 
these things have this little divider, this little spacer in here, which I left in. Some people take them out, but then it doesn't seal around the edge here. Okay. So the idea of that, what the engineer was telling me, was to create like a, a heat shield between the exhaust and the cylinder. I kind of like that theory. It makes sense. Does it actually work? I don't know. But I know on my aftermarket cylinder, that piece is molded right into um, the design. Like they just left it in and you can't pull it out. But yeah. See that? This still looks like new. I'll try to get a better shot of it here. So what I did there was I drilled those extra holes and I just took the screwdriver and I bent these out. That's all I did. <clears throat> oh, and I took the uh, I took the baffle out of here. Inside, there's a little baffle, you know, that long or so. And I took that left and right out. So that's it. Just the three holes, open it up there. And then I bent this cover out here. bent that piece out so it just get out a little more. You can see it's still running pretty rich. I could lean it out some more but uh, it runs great the way it is. And uh, yeah, I've actually done a, a quite a bit of cutting with it so we'll see what this piston looks like. That was pretty cool. I didn't hear him until he was flying right over the treetops there. Okay, so we'll take this piece out here. This one still looks really good. Anyway, I don't know how much of that you can see right now, but the idea see I would just leave that in some people take it out I I tried taking it out I didn't notice much of a difference like I said you need that for it to seal anyways you need that lip right there for it to seal. There goes my gasket. It's so windy here today yeah sorry about the video quality this phone was on its last legs here so the exhaust mod made a really big difference um, just being able to tune it properly without the limiters, that's obviously a big deal. The cover made it snappier, a lot snappier. It, I wouldn't say it made any overall power, but it, no ifs, ands, or buts. Way snappier when you let off the throttle and get back into it. Um, <clears throat> other than that, it's just a great little saw. It's really easy to work on, really easy to fuel up and everything. It's got nice big handles or knobs or whatever on it. And I really like this chassis. It's, it's too bad they've got such a bad reputation because there's nothing wrong with them. And uh, if you see my other videos of it cutting, there's one video where I'm cutting with this 20 inch bar, but that was actually a frozen, kind of kind of like a waterlogged frozen tree, but it still cuts okay. There's a dead standing tree behind me here. And then there's one on the ground over there. I might go cut, up, cut on that one over on the ground just to show you one final We'll make one final cut and then I'm going to clean this saw up. Put the 16 inch bar back on it and then uh, and then sell it. But we have another saw here that uh, that I want to show you. I picked up this little thing. It's uh, a John Deere 14 or 14V. I don't know if they call it that. It just, just says 14 on it. Really cool saw. This is actually made by Remington, apparently. An SL9, I think. I don't know for sure yet. I haven't really done a whole pile of research. This is the way I got it. But it just, it's gonna be my new saw for for uh, having on my quad or my side-by-side. -side. It's just, it really, really feels cool. Like when you're hanging on, it just feels good. It's got just this cool little grip here. Like a trigger finger almost, you know, and it, uh, I love it. It's light, it weighs about uh, 
11 pounds the way it sits. So it'll be a perfect little bush saw. And I even have some John Deere green paint for my old uh, vintage snowmobile. So I'll be able to use that paint up. So we're going to shine it up. I want to just run it stock if it'll run. And I'm going to see if I can get the, uh, I have to get this oil primer working. It's done. Other than that, it seems like it's going to run pretty good. It's got a throttle lock and everything. Yeah, these were made by Remington, apparently. So we'll do another video of that one later, but cool, cool old saw. My tripod here is now a bipod and it had a, it had a horrendous crash. I don't know if I'm, I didn't ever find the other leg yet. <laughs> I think I might know where it is somewhere out in the bush here. Actually not too far from this spot. We'll see if we find it. I've long since retired and my son's moved away I called him up just the other day I said I... Yeah, so it's a really nice saw to run too. It's uh, got the throttle lock. Choke on, prime it about six times. Probably a little lean on the low jet there. I could richen it up a bit. But there you have it. And I don't know for sure, but I'm wondering if maybe these screws on these cheaper, you know, homeowner saws, that maybe they back off a bit. So you might have to adjust it every now and then, but this one usually runs pretty darn good. If you don't have one of these kits, you should probably get one. They have them on Amazon for. I think it's about 20 or 30 bucks Canadian. Get the one that has, I think it's 12 pieces instead of 10, because then it'll have everything you need. Because I have another one of these kits, but it's missing the saw that I, for that Radley, uh, that 52cc Chinese clone saw. It was missing the, the one for it. But yeah, this is what these saws run, these, these blind. I wish every saw ran these. And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon Little boy blue and the man in the moon When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when But we'll get together then You know we'll have a good time then My son turned in just the other day he said, thanks for the ball, Dad, come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today, I've got a lot to do. He said, that's okay, and he walked away, but his smile never did and said. So yeah, when they bog out like that, just turn the screw out. Turning the screw out gives it just a little more fuel. And she'll run good for you. In behind the sprocket is where the oil pump is and the oil pump teeth on the other one had messed up. So I bought one off Amazon, just a cheap one, didn't know if it would work or not. I put it in there and worked for like two minutes and then it died. Like no pump and no oil. So then I realized that it was just, there's these little teeth that run the oil pump and if they're not spaced properly, it just won't spin the pump, right? So I took a screwdriver and wedged it in between the uh, the oil pump worm gear, whatever you call that, and uh, then I just spun the crank so I got my the right width of what the uh, the oil pump teeth were. It has never given me a problem since. I've done a lot of cutting with the saw. And the other thing I did was while I had the oil pump apart, I also modified the pump. I drilled it through a bit and uh, it's kind of rubber so i don't know how much of a difference it made if that was what made the most difference or if it was 
the piece inside the tank, like the, the pickup in the, in the oil tank, but I cut the end off of it and um, it made a, you know, a huge difference because now it throws out a lot of oil and before it threw out hardly any at all. So between all those little oil pump mods and the new pump, I mean, it lubes up this chain just nicely. This is 20 inch bar and chain and um, it throws plenty of oil at it. So you definitely want to do the oil pump mod as well. Between the, the pump mod, well, they're all good mods. Everything did, everything made an improvement. Everything I did to this saw. So again, it's no, uh, you know, powerhouse pro saw, but if you want a good little firewood saw, or if you want something just for your quads or whatever, throw in the back of your truck, like you can't go wrong with these little things. They work great. So, it does oil, I think, enough for even a 20 inch bar, but if you want a little bit more oil, you could just cut a little bit off the bottom of that, that oil pump pickup. Or maybe it's the hole that I drilled in the pump itself that makes it deliver more. I'm not 100% sure on that. I haven't experimented with it, but uh, it seems to put out enough oil. It still looks wet on there. Oh yeah, it's getting plenty of oil like that. So there you go. Oil pump mod is definitely something you want to do. I noticed that once I did that, like my chains weren't, uh, you know, they didn't seem to stretch as, as much. And they seem to uh, just stay sharper longer. I don't know if that's what the extra oil actually does or if it's just for you know really pitchy wood you know but anyway it worked good for me
for the old 2150. We'll throw a 16 inch bar on it and uh, a new chain and then I'll sell it. Good little saw. I'm gonna build that 2050 now, the 41cc dual ring. So that'll be interesting to see how it cuts compared to this. And yeah, you can see they don't have too much problem spinning the, the 20 inch bar, so, so great for limbing and everything else. There you go, right around, uh, you know, 10, 5, 11,000 RPMs. That's what she runs at now. Beauty day out here. Wow, that was cool. Birds everywhere just went nuts there. I just missed it. seem to like the sound of my chainsaw. Well, we're pretty low on fuel, so we better return to base here. We just got to get ourselves out of the bush and uh, head back home. Over and out. Can we make it up the other side is the question. <laughs> pull the mirrors in here. Or not. Hang on there, Chevelle. She's gonna fly in the front. Hang on! Here we go for a ride. Okay, we're in the bottom now. We made her. Now we gotta go up. That's pretty steep. But we'll make it. phone is still standing. No, oh, it's not. So that means I'll have to do it all over again. Well, that sucks.
Well, I was lucky I got it on video and then my phone fell over after. That's a good little hill. It's just a little greasy right now. It gets pretty tight at the top. Fun little spot. I had some buddies one time, they didn't see the the gully here and they jumped right off the end at speed and they're side by side and they landed down here. Broke a few uh, parts on the side by side and I think a few parts on their bodies, but they, they survived. That's a good little, that's a good little jump there to be falling into. The video kind of takes away from what it really looks like here, but you get the idea. Okay, back up we go. I cleared those branches last time I was out in this area last year. I was taking a video here the other day and I lost a leg off my tripod. So I came back that night. I noticed it at the fire pit. I came back that night and I couldn't find it, looked all over. And uh, so I went back to the fire pit today area there and I looked for it there. Again in the daylight, no, it's not there. I came back today and well, we found it. There's my leg. My bipod is now a tripod again. Right on.